Ah, Sicily, Italy's overlooked masterpiece. Here, olive trees stretch their arms towards the sky and vineyards quilt the landscape. But don't let the postcard views fool you. This island has layers, my friends. The people are as warm as the island's famous arancina, and its history as complex as its Nero d'Avola wine. From the Greeks to the Romans, the Arabs to the Normans, everyone wanted a piece of this paradise, and who can blame them? That's Sicily for you. There's Palermo, there's Taormina, but that's not where we're starting this adventure. We have our sights set on Agrigento, a place that's more than just a dot on the map for us. You see, I spent a couple of summers here, visiting family and fell in love with the culture and the food. I guess you could say it defined me as a traveler, and I haven't shut up about this place since. And now I'm back with Juliana, staying with my family, living the Sicilian lifestyle, sharing this place with you. This ancient city has been called many names by those who've conquered it. Acragas to the Greeks, Gergenti to the Normans, Agrigentum to the Romans, but to us and to Martin's family who've called this place home for generations. It's simply Agrigento. And so we made it to Agrigento. The journey to get here was long, but you don't care about that, and to be honest, we don't either. Because we're here, Martin's hugging his family and friends again, and even though I haven't been here before, this place feels like home. <laughs> and so we settle into our accommodations. My family's bed and breakfast, La Caseta. It's a new business. Actually, this used to be their home when I last stayed over here, but it's been completely remodeled. And they gave us the best room with views of the Mediterranean Sea because I'm the favorite nephew after all. So give us a second to sleep off our jet lag and then we start exploring. Now Sicily is a stunning island at the tip of Italy and the primary language is Italian, but you'll often hear the beautiful rhythmic Sicilian dialect. Spanish and English can get you pretty far as well as plenty of hand gestures. Now about money. Italy and thus Sicily uses the euro. It's always handy to have some cash for small purchases, although cards are widely accepted in most places. The best time to visit is spring or fall due to the great weather and fewer tourists. Now, let's get exploring. Well, we're in Sicily. I cannot believe that we're actually here, Martin. Yes, I'm very excited to be here. The first video that we're gonna record over here is in Agrigento, and there's a reason behind that. In 2011, I spent an entire summer over here, tried to learn Italian, and I kind of did. Yeah, so we're extremely excited to be spending a couple of weeks here. And here in Agrigento, we have a plan to show you guys a lot of things to do in the city, make you fall in love with it, make you consider traveling here. And what's up first on the agenda? First, if you guys know us, it's gonna be coffee. But right now it's gonna be the Italian way. So let's go. Lesson number one, if you drink your coffee over here, you have to drink it very fast. And standing up, that's the real Italian way. That's a concept I have to get used to. I'm still taking forever to drink my drink, uh, but what's great is that they serve it at the perfect temperature so you'll never burn your mouth. Grazie. <laughs> we have the goods. So we already showed you, we started with the coffee, but we also have these. This is so good. Right now we're at Le Cuspidi, that is a Sicilian tradition. Oh yeah, so it's a chain, they have a few different locations all throughout the island. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, but over here it's also well known because of their uh, ice creams, oh. called gelato. Okay, got yeah. it. So we're gonna probably have to come back here later. Many, many times. But in the meantime, we got, what is this called? Cornetto, al pistacchio. Oh my gosh. So it's like basically a pastry that is full of um, pistacchio, uh, inside. Oh, okay. How do you say that? Yeah, now Martin hasn't stopped raving about this. Um, well, so I've, the whole time I've known him, he's always talking about how great these are, so I have high hopes. 
Whoa. The inside is not what I expected. The pistachio, it's almost as if there was a pistachio Nutella. That's like the consistency of it. And they actually do sell it in jars to go. So I think we're gonna have to grab a jar, Martine. <laughs> I'm addicted. <laughs> Mi amor, does it feel weird to be back here? Not at all. Not at all. Agriento, it always feels like home. It's weird, that feeling of returning over here after many years, and it looks like the time doesn't pass through here. You know what I'm saying? It looks like everything is the same. Same places, same people. Well, I wish some of my friends, they were still here, but they, they moved to another part of Italy because they finished their uh, studies and now they're working. That happens, that's life. But Agrigento, per se, still the same. In front of La Cuspidi, there's this street that is very good for La Pasayata. That's something that Italians do after the meals. And it's actually just walking to see the different people that you know and say, ciao, buona sera, buona sera. Normally it's at the dinner, but you see over here, all the locals just walking around. But right now we're walking in the morning because look the beautiful Mediterranean Sea. It cannot get better than this. Next spot is Via Atenea. The people are starting to come out, town's coming alive, which is perfect. Because we're gonna walk down the street, see what we can find. It's apparently the most, uh, it's, it's like the main street in town. Lots of bars, lots of shops. And along the way, there's a few other stops we're gonna show you guys. So, let's get to walk. So over here, I'm gonna say it in Italian. Benvenuti in Via dell'Arte. So welcome to this art street. So we're gonna see a couple of things that they paint over here. And you know, Juliana and myself, we really like street art. So let's explore. It's easy to get lost in the city, but that had a purpose because when the Arabs dominated this island, they built the city with that purpose, to defend themselves from the attacks from different pirates. They modeled the city after their own, and you can see that the influence right now. A lot of stairways, tiny alleys, but it's charming. Oh, I have to show you something over here. This is very important for the people in Agrigento. This is the church of San Calogero, and it's very, very important. I don't remember if it's at the end of July or the beginning of August, but it's crazy. The city got madness, and it's a big saint. They, they carry it, but they, they need more than 100 people to take it out. So if you can see the stairs, sometimes just imagine 100 people take it out, and then they go back, and they're just fighting to take it out. And then they go all around the city, taking these heavy saints, all around while they throw um, some breath. It's a beautiful, beautiful festivity. So in summary, this town is adorable. Got it? But like we said, the Mediterranean is like right there and there's a spot Martin and his family want to take me. So we meet up with his aunt for a Sicilian beach day. So right now we're heading 10 kilometers away from Agrigento, the city, but we're still in the province of Agrigento. We're going to one place that is beautiful. Take a look at the Scala di Turchi, aka the Stair of the Turks. It's not just beach to swim at, it is an impressive cliff made of soft limestone and marble that's been eroded into steps over centuries. Our first stop, a look at point that offers a panoramic view. Now we want to make our way to the beach, so we head to the main parking lot. And once you park, you're gonna hop into an ape. One of the most Italian looking ways of getting around, and this will take you down to the beach. Maybe this driver watches our videos or something, because his impression of me was spot on. Oh, wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh my god! Wow. Oh my god! <laughs> Why is it called 
level in Turkey? Oh, because it looks like a step. Yeah. And we're, uh, this island, we're under the level of the sea for a long time. Uh -huh. So that is the erosion of the of the wind, uh -huh. the salt, etc. But because between the two, co the two hills, uh -huh. it's a very nice and protected beach. Uh -huh. So every vandals arrived here for installing this place, for installing the richness of the, the town. And for us, every vandal to speak different of us is a Turkish. Oh, so would I be Turkish? And they yes, would call me Turkish? Yeah, Turkish yeah. Okay. <laughs> Still today we say in our Sicilian dialect, Mama li Turki! <laughs> because they arrived for installing everything. Oh, okay. So that's why they arrived and it's a safe place to remain. And it's not visible from our city. So was pretty protected. Yeah, it's a very strategic them. place yeah, to be. Fact. Oh, cool. A couple of years ago, whenever I was living over here, people could go over there and just, you can see all that big rock full of people. Sometimes I brought my two cousins, uh, a couple of friends, we grab a couple of paninis, we go over there, even without a towel. We just sit over there, just take the sun, jump to the water, have a blast. And we just eat our panino and we were having such a great day. But because people didn't take care of this place, they forbid now to people go over there. It's a shame, but well, you can see how beautiful it is. So instead for us this afternoon, the hangout spot is this beach club where the Aperol spritzes flow and you ask yourself how all these people look so beautiful when the food here is this good. Speaking of which, time for lunch, a hole in the wall place called Bar di Porto, off the road back to Agrigento. See, this is what I love about coming to a town that has a local who's lived here for decades. We would have never known to stop here and uh, it's time for lunch. And you know what time that is for us? Arancina time. We're gonna make a whole video talking about all the food you need to try in Sicily, so stay tuned next week for that. But in the meantime, buon appetito. Next step, we're visiting one of the most famous places in Agrigento and in Sicily, that is La Valle dei Templi. Luckily for us, we have one person with us that knows a lot of this place. That is my aunt and she's a tour guide. So let's meet up with her. So Martina has this family here, right? And you may be wondering what the connection here is exactly. Well, Martina's aunt is his mom's sister. She's from Mexico originally, and during Mexico's World Cup in 1986, she fell in love with a visiting Sicilian. The rest is a story as old as time. Cuando este muchacho me invitó a venir a conocer este lugar maravilloso, me dejé seducir por este mar mediterráneo que parece nuestro Acapulco, por estos templos maravillosos que cambian de color de acuerdo a la luz que los ilumina, y por un plato de pasta, de salsa con salsa de tomate y una berenjena frita que yo no conocía. En ese momento, después de comer, dije, ay, yo quiero esto para el resto de mi vida. Cuidado, chicos, cuando desean algo en Sicilia porque se les puede cumplir. ¿eh? <laughs> so she's the family's traveler, working as a flight attendant for many years and eventually settling down in Sicily. My uncle has an eerily similar story, and for both Martina and I, these two family members were the reason we were inspired to travel and live abroad. Maybe you have an aunt or uncle like this too. Maybe we all do. Anyways, now she's living in Agrigento, maybe one of the only Mexicans living here, and she's found a way to use her multilingual skills by being a certified tour guide in Valle de Templi. I mean, the process to become a tour guide here is rigorous, and she's got hustle and a unique talent at giving this tour in English, Spanish, Italian, even Portuguese. We'll leave her info below, but in the meantime, we're gonna enjoy following her around on today's unofficial Bring Your Nephew to Work Day. So it's the biggest archaeological site entire in entire Europe. Whoa. That's wonderful. And you haven't seen it all yet, even though you've been here 12 times. Yep. <laughs> Imagine that. To really understand La Valle di Templi, we gotta go back a few centuries before Christ. Picture this, ancient Greece, but not just any old town. We're talking about Agrigento, or as it was called back then, Agragas. This was the third most crucial city in the Greek world just behind Athens and Syracuse. And it had everything. Lush agriculture, bustling fish markets, booming trade, and yes, even the drama of war. When the poet of the era, Pindar, came to visit, he was so blown away that he dubbed it the City of the Golden Temples and called it the most beautiful city of the mortal world. Talk about a five-star Yelp review. Pero la riqueza de Acragas fue la tentación de tantos pueblos. Here's where it got complicated. By 406 BC, Acragas caught the eye of the Carthaginians, and let's just say they weren't here to sightsee. The city took a hit, big time. Fast forward to 210 BC, enter stage left the Romans, and boy did they know how to make an entrance. They chopped down every cypress and pine in sight. Why? 
because they could, and they'd much rather grow wheat and turn this into an agricultural town. The result? Desertification. And with that, a name changed to Agrigentum, or Farm Nation. After the Romans had their fun, it was like a revolving door of rulers. Arabs, Normans, and finally the Spaniards before Italy said, all right, enough is enough. Let's wrap it up. Fast forward a few centuries and the ruins of this once glorious Greek city are what we now call La Valle dei Templi. Each temple here, from the majestic remains of the Temple of Concordia to the fragments of the Temple of Zeus, stands as a testament to human ambition and reverence. This was their way of reaching for the divine, of trying to touch something greater than themselves. And yeah, time has done its number on them, but these ruins, well, they are some of the best preserved temples of the Greek that we still have today. And amidst all this talk about history, Martine's aunt pulls us over to grab something from a tree. She mentions something about getting ready for the goats. We won't ask too many questions. So there's some goats here that are almost extinct in the rest of the world. They're just here. Apparently they really like to eat these uh, little seeds that we picked up earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the horns! Oh, wow! I've never seen a goat like this. His little tongue! Both of us are in the same boat. We're hungry and, let's be honest, we stink in this heat. But let's tackle one issue at a time. We haven't explored even half of this place yet, so a shower is off the table for now. However, there's a cafeteria right here that can definitely take care of our hunger. Alright, so about midway through our tour, there's a little stop at a little cafe. Well needed. And, yes, well needed. And it's my first time trying this. This is a granita and you can have it in different flavors. So right now, Juliana had one of... Watermelon, which sounds so good in this heat. Yeah, and for me, I have the traditional that is uh, lemon. Oh my God, it's delicious. And also, pro tip, they serve a special type of coffee here with almonds and pistachio. That's right, the only pistachio place that has it. Uh, dust, yeah. let's say like that. It's totally unique to this spot right here. And you might not realize that if you're coming here as a tourist, you think, oh, it's just a spot to grab a snack. No, that's like something you definitely need to try. We wrap up our snacks and decide to keep exploring. And our next stop is one you can't miss. I don't know if you recognize this. This is El Templo de la Concordia. So it's the best preserved temple over here in this valley. And a uh, curious thing, this is a symbol of the UNESCO. So this is a big thing and it's beautiful, beautiful right now. So I think we are very lucky that we can see this. And hopefully you can also do that. <laughs> oh, whoa, look at the shell. Check this out, guys. Sicily used to be underwater many, many, many years ago. And when you're still walking around, you can see shells everywhere, which is super cool. But anyway, that's not what I'm here to talk about. Now check this out. This temple, not only is it so well preserved, but there's actually a fun little optical illusion here as well. See, if this was designed how you'd think it would be, perfectly straight at the top, the human eye would actually morph it so it looked arc. But the people who designed this knew that and accounted for it. So they overcompensated with how they structured the top. It's actually slightly curved this way, which with the human eye, it makes it look perfectly straight. Same concept applies to the columns as well. If they would have just designed them perfectly straight, they wouldn't look perfectly straight. They actually have them a little bit bigger in the middle. So there's so much to say about this place, but just look at it, it's gorgeous. Valle di Templi was definitely a highlight of our trip, so much so that we went back for a second visit. For those thinking of going, it costs 13 euros to get in. And a word of advice, bring a hat, water, sunscreen, and maybe an umbrella. It gets seriously hot and you'll be walking for hours. Just when we thought our visit couldn't get more memorable, as we reached the Temple of Hercules, the sky started to put on a lightning show, like we're straight out of a Greek myth. We bolted for shelter faster than you can say Arancina, which brings us to our next lifesaver, a little shop where we grab some more of those delicious rice balls to go. And where did we enjoy this impromptu snack? Back at our cozy hideout, Martine's family's bed and breakfast, which, by the way, had killer Wi-Fi and a kitchen that saw more of us than the local eateries some days. Speaking of our Sicilian lifestyle, we were juggling our actual jobs on this trip from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. 
So by the time we were able to actually go outside, most of the restaurants in Agrigento had already been closed. Where do you go when you're in search of dinner and things are closed? Wherever people party. We're currently in San Leone and we're grabbing just a big sandwich over here. We met up with Martin's friend Alessandro and his fiance and they took us to this little yeah. fair yeah. slash food truck park where they say they come like all the time for the every time after they're done partying on the beach in San Leone. That's right. They come here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> He said, like, Alessandro doesn't like to dance, he likes to eat. <laughs> yeah, I like to eat. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Actually, it brings me a lot of memories over here because I used to spend every single night in this place. Oh my gosh, I bet. And now, take a look at what we have to eat. It's cheap, it's huge, it looks delicious, and we would never have known about this place if it wasn't for his recommendation. That's right. I take a moment to realize. Here I am, catching up with an old pal from 2011, while my wife, who's never seen this side of the world, takes it all in. Around us, carnival rides spin in the neon light, and in my hands, I got an absurdly delicious sausage sandwich buried under a mountain of fries while the Mediterranean Sea sparkles under the moonlight. This is what made me fall in love with this place, these unassuming nights just another Tuesday for the locals. Yet an extraordinary moment for a nomad like me. I hope you enjoy and love Agriento the same way I do. Yeah, and you guys are in luck because this is only video number one of our entire series through Agrigento. So we've left this video for you guys to watch next if you're watching this in the future. So long. Travel well. And make the world your neighborhood. See you guys next time. Ciao. Bye. Ooh.